Hello. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry about the construction noise. Uh, I can't help it. And this is the day that I have to film this. So, hello. Was that your tongue? Did your tongue come out? Thank you. I'm gonna put him down now. Uh, <laughs> have you ever seen those uh, what's in my bag videos? I. He thinks I'm boring. I am a sucker for those videos. I absolutely love them. I think they're the best thing since ever. Um, and and I decided I'm gonna put you down now. Stop pulling the sets. Oh boy. And I decided I wanted to make a what's in my bag video, um, but I don't really like have a bag. Uh, so I thought, let's make a what's in my convention bag video, um, which is technically a, a box on a trolley, but, 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 but. Uh, <laughs> I thought I'd do it anyway. Uh, so whether this is just interesting, uh, because you have no intention of selling it at a convention or an event ever, um, or it's something that can be helpful to you, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, and if you're wondering, who are you and what are you selling at conventions? Hi, I am... <laughs> I am Will, uh, Will Souls from Craft. I write books, that's what I do, um, and I take them to in-person events and I sell them there. I also do short story zines um, and stickers and postcards and stuff, all my designs um, that are to do with my books. Um, and this is what I take with me. Uh, so this is all stuff, almost all stuff, that lives in my convention toolkit um, so that it's always just there when I need it so that I don't have to think about it every single time I go to a convention. I know I'm very lucky to be able to keep all this stuff in this space, but it is what it is. Uh, that's, that's how life goes. I am lucky to be able to keep my stuff in this place and I'm glad of that fact. So I have, step one is my high-vis jacket, uh, which my wife used to work in construction, so she knows the real value of these in a construction site. Uh, because really the difference between being able to see someone and not is a high-vis jacket. Um, <laughs> we have two of these, one for each of us, and some convention centres require you to wear them if they're like setting up like walls and things like that. Sometimes they have like trucks, sometimes they have just people carrying big pallets of things, whatever it is, some conventions require it. So it just lives in my convention kit so I don't have to worry about whether I have it or not. I definitely have it, it's in the kit. Uh, the next thing I have is tape. I mean, honestly, it's not this tape, it's paper tape because I like paper tape better. Uh, paper tape generally comes off easier and without leaving a residue, but um, this is the tape I have to hand because my paper tape is currently with my box up orders. Uh, <laughs> and it lives with the other stuff. So like it comes across when I pack my zines, like my zines just go like full force one to the other. Um, but tape is really useful because you can well tape things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's the benefit of tape. Um, speaking of tape, of course, um, some other useful things. Uh, this is stuff that lives in my emergency kit rather than my convention kit, but it does mean it goes with me and it is something that I would otherwise put in a, in a convention kit. Um, so why do I have an emergency kit? Because I have a chronic illness. Uh, but wet wipes are really useful if you have accidentally left any sticky residue. You can generally get it off with a wet wipe and then you don't have to go searching for like tissues and water and oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Um, so that's something that transfers across from here too. Um, so I will be referencing back to that a fair few times because the stuff that's in there that I would otherwise put in here. Uh, the next thing is a tape measure. These are all like the construction parts. I appear to have put this in a specific order. The construction parts include the tape measure. Uh, so the tape measure is really useful because you are promised a specific size of space and a specific size of table. And sometimes convention centers don't really think about that or convention centers or the organizers or whoever it is don't really think about that when they're actually setting up the space. They don't think to measure it. You would think they would think to measure it, but they don't think to measure it. And sometimes you get to the space and you're like, this feels really tiny, let me just, or at least that's what A.K. Faulkner says, who recommended that I put a tape measure in. Uh, fun fact, this is from my wife's archaeology kit because she is no longer a commercial archaeologist, but she used to be. Um, and that was where she needed to have a tape measure with her name written on the back, uh, which is why I'm being weirdly protective about that. Um, and uh, yeah, she doesn't need that kit very often anymore. So this now lives in my kit instead. Um, Uh, another thing on the like construction thingy of it is 
bin bags. Uh, it sounds like a not so thing to bring with you. Why would you bring a roll of bin bags? I mean, it's not an entire roll. This used to be a roll, but I've used some of them. But not only is it useful to be able to have a bin at your table, so you don't have to go to the bin every time you make a little bit of rubbish or accidentally like accumulate a little pile of rubbish on your table. Nobody wants that. Um, but also they can be really useful for like, especially for me bringing books. When we were coming back from MCM, we didn't think we would have enough books to that the college project. We don't know. Hi. Okay. When we were coming back from MCM, we didn't think we were gonna have enough books to need to take the suitcase back in beforehand. Um, <laughs> but, but it turned out we had a few more books than we intended. Uh, so we ended up having to use a reusable shopping bag to bring the books back home in. So I did wrap them in. Uh, can I have that? I did wrap them in a bin bag so that they wouldn't get like wet or anything like that. Um, <laughs> so, you know, bin bags, a multitude of uses. I also use them to keep my, uh, the easel that I put my zine stand on and the actual zine stand itself together um, when we're going to and from events. So I'm not carrying like a plywood board and an easel. I'm carrying a bag of plywood board and easel, but they're too big to fit in a regular standard bag. So a bin bag works really well. Uh, they get paper taped together as well. I'm sorry if you can hear poor Thus, he's ripping apart a leaflet that just came through the door. <laughs> the next thing on to mind, the next thing on my list, on my in my kit rather, is um, sticky notes. Really useful for literally everything. Wi-Fi passwords. Writing down someone's name because it's hard to spell and like they want to write it for you so you can copy it. Uh, giving people advice. Making price notifications if you've forgotten that that was a thing that you needed. Uh, all sorts. Uh, sticking a last one sticker on something. Um, all of those kinds of things. Uh, in the zone of pricing, I have this little folder. This has all of my price stuff in it. So it has all of my price maths in the back, like how much everything costs me to get, as well as how much everything uh, costs for people to buy it. And then where we can wrangle things and like how much a bundle costs versus what it would be priced up as. Uh, so like what it's worth. Um, if it was priced up by like retail pricing and all of that kind of stuff, it's very complicated nonsense maths, but it's nice to have it. Uh, written down. I also have things like these little like draw attention to the bundle things um, and I have no that's not for you little uh, price labels um, like a 1950s shopkeep uh, <laughs> because it's easier to have it labeled pricing for when people don't want to ask you um, because there's always people at these kind of things who don't want to talk to you because they're worried about you being too pushy or whatever. Uh, real quick, I'm just going to take that off him. Sorry, I'd edit that kind of stuff out, but I don't have the ability to edit videos right now. Uh, so you have to get the stream of consciousness, and I've tried to make this twice already, so I'm not stopping <laughs> unless something really dramatic happens. The next thing in my kit is lanyards. Um, I'm specifying that I have two of these, despite the fact that I have two high-vis vests as well, and I didn't show both of those, because they have different badges on. So this one's covered in they-them badges, because it's mine, uh, and non-binary, and my Wi-Fi signal is strong, so that I can, like, notify people. Like, draw attention to these things. That's the non-binary flag, that's the bi flag. People will see that, and they'll be like, ooh, non-binary and bi? Are your books non-binary and bi? And I can say, yes. <laughs> because they are. Did I introduce myself properly or did I get distracted because it was post? I don't know. Anyway, it's fine. Uh, and then the other one I have is my wife's one. And the thing I actually want to draw attention to on this is that she's got a little love interest badge from uh, an independent artist we met at MCM like yonks ago before I'd published any books. Um, <laughs> and I also have their NPC badge, uh, which is now for anyone who's not my wife who's at the table. So if you see the green love interest badge, you know it's my wife. And if you see the blue NPC badge, you know it's not. I don't think anyone else cares about this, but I just find it really funny. She also has a phaser, just in case things get nasty. <laughs> uh, the next thing I have is my takings book. Um, this has everything, everything in it. Um, <laughs> I swear, I say that about everything. This, I write in this beforehand, how many books I'm taking on zines and, and stickers and postcards, everything how many of each thing I'm taking with me to the event and then every time we sell one we write it in the book and then we can total up like amounts and how many books and all of that kind of stuff and then when we come home 
I total the amount of books and things and everything that we brought back and make sure it all matches up and that we haven't lost something along the way or like if something gets too battered it gets written down as being too battered for use and that kind of thing um I highly recommend having one of these um I think everybody recommends having one of these but I highly recommend getting a spiral bound one because this is falling apart and I've only been to like three events or this was falling apart by the time I'd only been to three events so spiral bound next time uh, but I am just going to keep using it for as long as I can because otherwise it's a waste. Um, I also have my little pencil case, uh, Pirates obviously. Um, so I have my signing pens in here. Uh, these are the pens that I sign books with. Um, I like the metallic sheen but I also have matte ones. These pens specifically do not bleed through the page which is really important for me but they are kind of nice and like vibrant and that kind of thing so it's it makes it more special because I, if you're buying a signed book you want it to be more special. Um, I also have some permanent markers. Um, I don't like using these to sign because they bleed through the page but they are really useful to have because sometimes you have to write on things that are you know you have to make permanent marks. Um, I also have this thing which has a little blade right in there um, for cutting. Uh, so like you can cut through zip ties, you can cut through paper, you can cut through cloth, you know, you can cut through all the really convenient things you might, you know, might need to be able to cut through. The only thing this cannot cut through is my paper tape which is hilarious objectively <laughs> but it means you just rip the paper tape. Um, but yeah, I use this instead of scissors because the town that I live in has really strict laws, bylaws, county laws, I don't know. There's a lot of knife crime that happens here and it's just not worth having a blade and carrying it around as you go to and from these events. Um, and then the final tool I have in here is a uh, regular normal pens uh, which I use for writing in my takings book. Um, other things that AK recommends bringing in your AK Faulkner uh, recommends bringing in your convention toolkit includes chargers and like portable chargers and charging cables which don't live in here because we use them all the time uh, <laughs> but those get packed up each time I need them. Uh, the other things that I take include like a face mask because it's it's still a thing people are still immunocompromised. Uh, also tissues because nobody wants a snotty cellar whether it's because you have hay fever or whatever but also convenient if you accidentally knock over your tea and spill it somewhere or somebody else does that happened to me once it's one of those things it happens uh, I also have plasters which I don't necessarily think you should take because there's always a first aid first aider first aid zone uh, at events like these and they always have plasters but I have skin that does not like plasters so I take the ones that will stick to me because otherwise they'll be like uh I'll be like can I have a plaster and they'll be like yeah plunk and then it'll just immediately all the way. I <laughs> uh, already talked about my wet wipes. Uh, take your painkillers. Um, uh, some of the stuff is just stuff that lives in my, well, all of the stuff is just stuff that lives in my emergency kit but I'm looking through it like what is stuff that's specifically convention helpful? There are safety pins in here somewhere. I highly recommend those and I like, I use them because I've got this <laughs> flag garland thing that goes around my table and I safety pin it to my own tablecloth because then I'm not taping it anywhere and it's not causing any damage and that kind of thing. Um, but also the weirdest thing that I found the most useful, I have these anyway for my chronic illness, uh, <laughs> but these little cool packs, so they're the ones that you just like, you pop the inner bag and does the chemical reaction and it's cold, it's an ice pack. Most people are familiar with the hot bag versions of these. That I've, most people that I know are more familiar with the hot bag versions of these. But this actually turned out to be really useful for my wife because she started getting, she does not have a chronic illness, she is a normal person. Um, but she started getting really overheated on the Sunday of MCM in May. And I had, I have these things with me anyway. I took two per day for MCM and I just took them on day one and I was like, I'll just take them home at the end. Like any that I have left, I will just take home. Um, and I had some spare ones, like I had more than the two I had allotted for Sunday. Um, when she started overheating and I was like, oh, I know here you go, have a cold pack. Uh, and it really helps her feel a lot better. So, you know, that's convenient to have. I'm not saying you need to take it. To do with that information what you will, basically. Um, but yeah, that is everything that lives in my convention toolkit. That is everything that is in my bag for conventions. Um, 
other things that I take with me that aren't in this video, as I said, charging cables, power banks, that kind of thing, but also like snacks and water uh, are really helpful. So I always take a water bottle with me. Um, and actually we've been taking two water bottles with us. Um, so we have two people's worth. <laughs> Um, because we can never seem to find the refill fountains. Like everywhere says, oh, we've got a refill fountain. And I'm like, where is it though? <laughs> um, but yeah, we take those, we take um, snacks, lots of snacks, more snacks than you think you're gonna need because it is way better to have to take snacks home than it is to be really hungry on the day. Nobody wants that. But also it's really difficult uh, for me because I don't like to be visibly snacking when people come up to the table because people don't want to interrupt you when you're eating, right? That's a really normal thing. So I have this whole mentality about it, which I don't think is normal or necessary. <laughs> I have this whole mentality about it where I'm like, if I have like a little <laughs> travel pack of cereal, I can just eat some of it. And then when people come over, I can just stop for a while and come back to it when I'm done interacting with people. And that's really great because people don't get upset with that if I just stop eating the cereal. <laughs> Like a toddler, yes. And then I've got a little bowl of Cheerios, like a toddler. Um, <laughs> but people don't mind interrupting you if you're eating a little bowl of Cheerios, like a toddler, um, with your bare hands and no milk, yum, yum, yum. Um, and then you just, you know, wet wipe your hands and you interact with them, you sign their book. Everybody's happy, they go on their way. Why do I wet my hands? Just in case someone's gluten free. Just in case. I just don't want to be that person that makes their book all gluteny and allergeny. It's like I was once eating, I was once eating bread when one of my book deliveries appeared. I was so excited about getting to unbox this book that I was like, right, I'm going to have to decide now whether I'm going to eat the bread. Tasty, homemade, honey coated bread. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> or if I'm going to unbox the books because I do not want to accidentally drip breadcrumbs into these books in case someone has celiac or a severe gluten allergy. And, <laughs> and I end up making them flare because I have dripped my breadcrumbs into here. So I ended up uh, having to wait and eat the bread first and then <laughs> then unbox the books after I'd washed my hands. And my wife thought I was kind of silly but sweet, uh, which is basically what I'm going for. Ooh, there's the other thing that I completely forgot that always goes into my convention kit. Uh, but this one stays in my backpack so it goes with me to the convention and home every night. And that is my cash box, my float. Um, so, <laughs> uh, I, uh, I mean, everybody has a cash box, don't they? Well, not everybody. Um, I take cash. Um, some people don't, some people only take cards, but I will take cash. Um, so I have a little cash box and I have in there my float, which is the money that I have designated to exchange for people so I can give them change, uh, off my, like they give me, well, I mean, if they give me a 10 pound note. Uh, generally, <laughs> most of my things are 10 pounds. Uh, that's not true, not most of them. Um, so my stickers and postcards are the only things cheaper. Stickers, postcards and zines are the only thing cheaper than 10 pounds. But nine times out of 10, if someone's giving me a 10 pound note, they're buying something that's 10 pounds. So like my whole merch pack or uh, Welcome to Humanity is 10 pounds. Um, well, it's 9.99, but I'm not fiddling with pennies. So I just call it 10 pounds now. Um, and but if someone gave me a 20, I'd have a 10 pound note to give them back. Or if someone gave me a fiver because they want a sticker, I'd be able to give them the three pounds they, <laughs> they need back. Um, don't hold me to these prices. Everything is in like this, my current price guidelines, but everything is always changing uh, because manufacturers charge different prices sometimes. Uh, if they up their prices, I have to up mine because that's just how it works. I don't get to decide that. Um, like how for a really long time uh, Mary Ellen Finding the Air signed copy was the same price as the regular copy because the regular copy had to go up in price because of how much it started to cost to print it um, but because I had a bunch at home and I didn't have to order anymore for a while I didn't up those prices yet but then as soon as I had to, I did warn about this <laughs> as soon as I had to order more they cost more to print because I'm ordering on the new price scheme so I had to up the price of it Sad face. That meant I also had to up, like change the price of, gosh, everything. <laughs> oh, everything. Was it finding the eyes or was it breaking the curses? It's probably not important. One or the other of them. Uh, <laughs> so if you're thinking, that's really cool, Will. Uh, I love your convention toolkit. Uh, what's in my bag? Uh, what conventions? Um, the best place to find out what conventions I'm going to is to be on my mailing list. Sign up in the description box below. 
um, or to follow me on social media because it is far easier for me to talk about these things in those places than it is to talk about them on YouTube because I cannot edit videos right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, still, that's still a problem. And therefore this is all just a stream of consciousness and I only do one YouTube video a month. And to be fair, I only do one mailing list email a month, but because I only do one YouTube video a month, sometimes I film like three in a row because um, I have ideas and then that's three months before I can do another update on like something that exciting that's coming. So please do look in the other places if you can. Um, because I don't know when this is coming out. I tell you what, if this is coming out in October, uh, which it might, <laughs> I will put it before MCM. I will put it before MCM Comic Con because I'm going to MCM Comic Con this October. As in 2024. God, there's a bug bite on my arm. Uh, I'm going to Comic Con 2024. MCM Comic Con in the London XL Centre. Uh, I will be in writer's block. I don't know my table number off the top of my head, but come find me. <laughs> Buy my stuff uh, if you can be in London and can afford tickets to MCM. Uh, it's combined now with is it EXG games? I don't know. I'm too dyslexic for this. It's three letters in a row and one of them is X. I don't know the rest of them. <laughs> because I'm too dyslexic, I can't do acronyms at all because they just get muddled. The only acronym I can do is IPA for Interplanetary Alliance Series. And yes, I know IPA like the beer and IPA like something else. International Phonetic Alphabet also. But no, Interplanetary Alliance is my IPA. <laughs> anyway, I will see you next time I see you. If you want to keep up to date about me and all my things, or you're interested in buying any of my books or supporting me via my coffee account, because this is not a monetized YouTube channel, thus the reason I can't afford to fix my camera, uh, <laughs> please do check the links in the description box below for where to find me and where to support me and all of that kind of stuff. And I will see you next time. Bye.